Hello and welcome to this further exploration of Bitcoin. In this video, we're going to discuss some of the risks that are posed by holding Bitcoin. We'll also run through some of the advantages you gain by trading Bitcoin as a CFD with Trading212. And we'll also take a look at what some high profile financial figures have had to say about Bitcoin. Do keep watching to the end of the video because we're also going to take a quick look at a proposed new cryptocurrency that could potentially make some waves. Hello, I'm Peter Martin with Trading212. We add educational videos about trading to YouTube regularly. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you get to know whenever we upload a new video. Well, in our introduction to Bitcoin, we mentioned that there is a maximum theoretical number of Bitcoin that will ever be available. If you haven't watched that introduction already, do check it out to find out the basics about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. But let's now take a closer look at this aspect about the maximum theoretical number of Bitcoin and the implications that this poses. So the Bitcoin supply comes from the mining of blocks, as we explained in our introductory video. And the Bitcoin protocol dictates that the number of Bitcoin from each block decreases every 210,000 blocks by 50%. So it decreases geometrically at certain intervals. Back in 2010, the reward for mining a block was 50 Bitcoin. In 2014, it had halved to 25. Right now, you get 12 and a half at the time of uh, creating this. Uh, sometime in the future, though, that's going to drop to 6.25 and 3.125 and so on and so on until we tend towards zero. And that means that the total should max out just shy of 21 million in total. Now, the actual total should be smaller because of things like lost Bitcoin. And this creates an interesting comparison with fiat currency where there is no maximum. Um, fiat currencies such as the US dollar or euros or British pounds, where central banks have the power to magic up money out of thin air as they see necessary, with theoretically no maximum. Of course, in reality, monetary policy is implemented with regards to the well being of the economy. They can't just on a whim create um, as much as they want. They need to worry about things like maintaining confidence enough to create demand for government debt and so on. But central banks do generally like a little inflation. Now, inflation is a decrease in spending power per unit currency. When I was a young boy, you could buy a Mars bar for 16 pence in the newsagent. Today, it will set you back 60p. So my money now buys less and that's because of inflation. Now, advocates of Bitcoin suggest that the finite supply of Bitcoin should mean, in due course, eventually, the spending power of Bitcoin should not be subject to this same decay in value. Let's put a big question mark next to that, though. So this pro-Bitcoin argument suggests that fiat currency like US dollars or British pounds will eventually see their spending power eroded by inflation, uh, something that shouldn't happen to Bitcoin in the long run. And therefore, theoretically, Bitcoin should be a better store of value because it won't see its spending power eroded by inflation. But does this really hold? What I thought might be quite interesting is to propose a thought experiment, a kind of hypothetical situation. So bear with me with this. Suppose that an eccentric billionaire has uh, taken an interest in you and proposes to employ you for the next 10 years, but effectively they're going to put you on gardening leave. You don't actually have to do any work, but you're not allowed to do any work anywhere else. So he's going to be paying your uh, income and he's going to pay this in a lump sum up front. And he's also going to buy all your investments and take them off your hands. So all you're going to be uh, holding is your house or the clothes you own, but all your outgoings are going to have to come out of this lump sum that he's going to pay up front that's supposed to cover all your outgoings for the next 10 years. So you shouldn't be having any um, other income from investments because he's purchasing all these investments off you. And he's going to be buying this for the quite generous sum of 10 million pounds. So he's giving this to you up front. You're not allowed to invest this money. You're purely allowed to just spend it on things that you need immediately. So you can spend it on going on holiday for your next holiday, but you can't buy a holiday for the next five years 
with this money, you can't invest it in uh, stocks and shares. You have to hold this sum and you have a choice of two ways of holding it. You can either hold it as Bitcoin for the whole of the 10 years, and use that Bitcoin to pay for the things you need, or you can hold the 10 million pounds as pound sterling and put it in a bank account where it will accrue interest, but also be subject to uh, inflation, i.e. its spending power should decline over time. Which would you choose? Let us know in the comments section, because I am genuinely interested to hear what people have to say on this matter. Now, the most obvious way to benefit from Bitcoin rising in value is to buy some Bitcoin and hang on to it. However, there are some difficulties or risks that may arise from doing so. So let's talk about that. The first thing I want to mention here in terms of the risks of holding cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin is that there is a rather storied history of online exchanges failing. The most high profile one being Mt. Gox, a Japanese based Bitcoin exchange which went bust in 2014. Now, at the time, it was the world's leading Bitcoin exchange. So what went wrong there? Well, hundreds of millions of dollars of Bitcoin went missing in a security breach that had been going on for years there. Now, that breach was nothing to do with the Bitcoin protocol per se, and things have perhaps moved on in the intervening years, but it is still a cautionary tale. Now, if you're storing your Bitcoin with an online exchange, that is a form of an online wallet. But there are other types of wallets, other ways to store Bitcoin, but all have potential risks. Your wallet basically holds the private key that allows access to your Bitcoin address. And the most secure way to store this in terms of keeping away from hackers or online security breaches will be to store it offline. Um, and you can actually store it as a paper wallet, a physical printout. Um, you see you actually print on paper both your Bitcoin address and your private key, usually in QR form. You just keep it somewhere secret and safe. However, if you lose it or it's damaged, let's say in a flood or fire, then you lose access to your Bitcoin. As we've said before, there's no central authority overseeing Bitcoin, so there's no one to go to to try and appeal or retrieve your Bitcoin for you. It's gone for good. Similarly, you can also have what's called a hardware wallet. Now, this would store the information offline. You would only connect to the internet when you want to actually retrieve your Bitcoin. So fairly secure in terms of keeping you offline most of the time. But once again, if that physical device is lost or stolen or destroyed, then you lose your Bitcoin. And you can also install a software wallet on your computer or on your mobile device. But if your device gets stolen or fails and you don't have the information backed up anywhere else, then once again, you lose your Bitcoin. And of course, if your PC is hacked, then you have the same basic problem. But of course, holding Bitcoin isn't the only way to profit from changes in Bitcoin's value. You can also just trade it as a CFD through Trading212. And this has a number of advantages, and it does help preclude some of those risks that we were just talking about. So let's run through some of these. When you're trading Bitcoin or any other cryptocurrency with Trading212, you do it as a CFD, a contract for difference. So you never actually hold Bitcoin or any other crypto coin. You simply make profit or losses based on changes in the value of the cryptocurrency. This means when you trade with Trading212, that you sidestep all the storage decisions and the attendant potential risks that we've just been discussing. Now, Trading212 UK Limited is authorised and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority, the FCA. The FCA doesn't regulate cryptocurrency. Bitcoin, Ripple, Litecoin and all the rest are unregulated in the UK and therefore transfer, purchase and sale of Bitcoin is outside the FCA's regulatory remit. But derivatives of cryptocurrencies like CFDs are regulated by the FCA, and this means that FCA client money rules apply. All client funds are kept separately in segregated bank accounts with Trading212 UK Limited and are covered by the Financial Services Compensation Scheme. Finally, when you trade CFDs with Trading212, you can trade with leverage, offering you the convenience of not having to tie up funds to the tune of the full value that you are trading. But you should be aware that leverage itself 
can naturally entail risk and you shouldn't trade with leverage unless you understand those risks. I also thought it might be quite interesting to hear what a few high profile financial figures have to say about Bitcoin. So let's run through a few slides now to show some opinions from these people. So famous billionaire investor Warren Buffett had this to say on the subject, Bitcoin, it's ingenious and blockchain is important, but Bitcoin has no unique value at all. It doesn't produce anything. He said that in an interview in February 2019. And then Jamie Dimon, the CEO of JP Morgan, He's been famously outspoken on the subject of Bitcoin. Here's one of the things he had to say on the subject. Blockchain is a technology which is a good technology. We actually use it. It will be useful in a lot of different things. What I have an issue with is a non-fiat cryptocurrency. I don't personally understand the value of something that has no actual value. The only value of Bitcoin is what the other guy will pay for it. And he said that in October 2017, following up, on comments he'd made the month before where he'd gone out of his way really to knock the cryptocurrency. And finally, a more positive assessment from Yves Chouafiti, CEO of French asset management company Tobam, who said that Bitcoin is a diversifying asset. If you put 1% of Bitcoin in a portfolio, you will reduce the overall risk of the portfolio because of the low correlation that Bitcoin has to other assets. So that's his view on the subject. What I'd like to finish with is talking about a proposed new cryptocurrency called Libra. It's still very much in its early stages, but there has been a white paper published on the subject. So let's talk a little bit about this. So Libra is a cryptocurrency that has been proposed by Facebook. It's projected for release at some point in 2020. One of its aims is mainstream adoption. Obviously, Facebook has billions of users. The mission statement for Libra is to enable a simple global currency and financial infrastructure that empowers billions of people. One potential problem, though, is that lawmakers in the US seem pretty opposed to the whole thing. Some have actually called for a halt in development of Libra. So laws or potential regulation, these could be a problem. So let us know what you think. Is Libra bad news for Bitcoin or could it possibly improve public perception of cryptocurrencies? Drop us a message in the comments section. We do read each one. Well, I hope you enjoyed this further exploration of Bitcoin. If you did, please take a moment to hit the thumbs up button and give us a like. Well, that's all for now from me, Peter Martin and Trading212. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.